everybody. Welcome to Kitten School. Today we have Buster with us, Buster Brown. And Buster is a five or six year old uh, neutered male. So I don't know where he came from. He was brought into the shelter. He is such a sweetheart that we know we can get him a good home. But he's here with us at Kitten School because he is suffering from a pretty bad upper respiratory infection which is caused by a virus. It's very common with cats. Uh, fortunately, they, usually, they almost always get over it. They're just kind of miserable while they have it, like when we have a cold. Uh, he is on antibiotics, but there are some things that you can do to make a kitty who is suffering from upper respiratory infection feel better. Uh, just like when you have a cold, you probably have things that just make you feel better. So I've been doing that with Buster, and he does not like taking his medicine, do you? But he is pretty open to some of the other things. So one thing I do, it's just very simple. I wipe off the eyes and the nose, and those often get a lot of uh, pus and crusty stuff around the eyes and the nose. I use a clean cloth every time. I just cut up towels and have a big basket full of these, so I always have a clean one. And then I just dip it in some warm, plain water, wring it out, and then I will do his nose. So I'm just gonna gently wipe. I know. And what you're doing is you're just clearing out any dried snot or anything that can block the nasal passages. There's a good boy. You want to be very gentle because their noses are tender, especially if they've been um, draining from their noses. It can be really sensitive, but it, it's very helpful to get anything that could be blocking the nose out because smelling is how a cat will eat. If they can't smell, they won't eat. So that's one thing we worry about with kitties that have upper respiratory infections is that they just lose their they're, they just lose their appetite and then they lose weight and get dehydrated so anything we can do to keep that nasal passage open is really good now another thing I will do and Buster doesn't particularly like this either most cats don't but I think it's very helpful is to put a little bit of regular plain saline into their nostrils, I mean, nose drops, but you never wanna use an Afrin or anything besides plain saline. So I've got some right here, it's just good old generic saline. And what I do, instead of doing it straight from the bottle, I will soak the end of a Q-tip with it, get it nice and soaked, good baby. And then you've got your soaked Q-tips and then you're just gonna gently tip back the head and squeeze the Q-tip there. And it drops just enough liquid into the nostril. Here we go. Oh, good boy. There's a good baby, yeah. Again, use the Q-tip. It helps you control how much of the saline goes in so you're not using the bottle and, and dousing the poor cat. Sometimes this will make the cat sneeze and that's actually good because sneezing will push out and force out any kind of obstructions that are in there. So if it makes them sneeze, let them sneeze it out. Um, sometimes if I do this with a cat that has been very blocked, nasal blockage, then they sneeze and sneeze and they get everything out and then they'll go and eat when they haven't eaten in a day or two because they finally can smell. And then also I just make sure that I keep Buster groomed because when a cat is sick, they don't want to groom. You know how when you're sick you don't feel like doing anything I know I don't so I'm just gonna keep him groomed I'll brush him I'll take a damp washcloth and wipe him off with like short little strokes like this feels like they're being licked by an, another kitty cat and that helps to keep them clean and just makes them feel good so little things like that can go a long way in helping your kitty feel better until they are over their cold Right, Mr. Buster. Such a good boy. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And if you like the video, please subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, I try to answer those too. So let me know what you think. 
Uh, have you had experience with a cat with an upper respiratory infection? And what are some things that you do? I'm always learning new things I like to share. So uh, feel free to drop a comment and um, join in the conversation. Thanks, and we will see you next time.